Hello guys, today I am rating every single NFL draft class, and before we get started, I'd just like to ask you guys to please subscribe, I hate doing this, but this video took me so long to make, and it would mean a lot, but uh, enough blabbering, let's get into the video. Our first team are the Arizona Cardinals, and they had a first round trade where they shipped off their pick in exchange for Hollywood Brown from the Ravens, and... I understand why they did this, trying to get the connection between him and Kyler Murray, keep him happy. I think that's the only reason they did it. A bit of a, an overpay, undoubtedly. He's not worth a first-round pick, certainly not a mid one, which they had. But if the connection works out and it's to keep your quarterback happy, I guess I can get on board. Now, outside of that trade, which I do not like, is probably around a C- minus grade on the trade, then... They actually had some pretty good picks, starting at pick 55 with Trey McBride, which I think will be a very fun weapon for Kyler Murray to utilize and is definitely good value. It's right where he should be. And I think it's a it's a B. It's a B grade. It's right where it's good value. It's right where he should be. You know, it's it's an above average pick, right? It's not a whiff. It's good. Uh, next, they took Cameron Thomas, uh, a bit of a tweener and a uh, versatile defensive lineman. And at 87, this is actually good value, once again. And I, I think this is probably a B-plus pick. Um, I would have liked to see a corner go with one of these top 100 picks. Uh, didn't get one for a while. But I, I still don't think you can deny the value of Cameron Thomas here. Then my Jay Sanders, who I actually had rated above Cameron Thomas as a, as a tr more true edge rusher, um... And I think this is great value at pick 100. I, I actually really liked him. And I think this is probably an A- minus pick. I, I really like it. A- minus grade on that. Then we have to skip down 101 spots to Keontae Ingram, running back Southern California, who I did not scout. I didn't. And I'm not too sure on this pick. Um... It's a running back in the sixth round. You know, it's a sixth round pick. You can't get too mad. I think at the end of the day, it's not the sexiest pick. Small school guy. I don't know too much about him. I'm gonna just going to drop it a C because I can't do any worse than that. I can't do any better than that without uh, knowing a little more. Next up, Lakita Smith, a guy who I did scout and I actually really like. Uh, fourth or fifth round grade on him. I really like the value here. And I like the fit as a, as a good uh, depth piece on the offensive line immediately, but potentially a starting guard down the road. So definitely, I think, I think that's an A pick there. I think that's a, a home run. Next up, Christian Matthew, uh, corner Valdosta State. Uh, another guy who I didn't look at, don't know. Um, but I know he's a corner, and I know you needed corner, and I know you needed to pick it before the seventh round. So... You know, that's that's definitely a problem, waiting for this pick. But because you finally got a corner, I can't grade it worse than like a B-, minus. I don't think. And it's a 7th rounder. It's hard to rate 7th rounders bad. But it's easy to rate them good, like Jesse Lucchetta, who I think is a massive steal here. And same thing with Marquise Hayes. I think both of them are 4th, 5th round guys who slipped to the 7th, and I absolutely love the value here. I think they're both A-pluses. I mean, I think the value of both those players is crazy, honestly. So overall, a really good draft class. You know, not counting the trade, it, it it's debatably an A class. But if you, I think you have to take into account that trade, and I think it brings it down to a, a B plus in my opinion overall. Next team up are the Atlanta Falcons, and uh, they're a team who kind of surprised me in the first round, taking Drake London over Garrett Wilson, and uh, Wilson's a better separator, uh, definitely faster, but London is uh, an elite contested catch guy. He's not the greatest separator, but he's going to bail out whoever is throwing the ball to him um, in Atlanta this season, and I think he's going to be essential. I mean, team him up with Pitts, it's gonna be it's gonna be scary. Uh, at thirty eight, oh, uh, I completely forgot to uh, mention his grade. I'm getting ahead of myself. Yeah, it's a B plus pick. Uh, I don't think it's elite value. I think I would have preferred Garrett Wilson here, but B plus, it's a good pick. 
38 was Arnold Abiketti, and I thought for sure this would be a quarterback, but it was Abiketti, and I really like it. He's an older prospect, but he, he's got a deep bag of pass rushing moves. Deep bag, um, which is unusual for this class, which is filled of raw athletes at the edge position. Uh, Abiketti's more polished um, and still a really good athlete as well, so I, I love this pick. It's an A-, minus, I think. I think it's, it's a really good pick. At 58, we've got Troy Anderson, linebacker from Montana State, and I like this pick as well. I think it's good value. It's right where he should have went, is around this area, and I'm going to give it a B. I think it's just a good pick. Uh, 74, Desmond Ritter. I, I thought 58 would be a quarterback. I thought 38 would be a quarterback. Instead, they go at 74, and he's the second QB off the board, which was crazy that he fell this far. Uh, Desmond Ritter, who was my QB2, just behind Malik Willis, and I really like Ritter. I think he actually has a pretty decent floor, probably the second highest floor in the class. I think he could start immediately. I do think it's better if he waits a year, sits, and great thing is in Atlanta, they can do both. They could do either one, and uh, I think the value of him at 74 is great, and I think it's an A-plus pick. At 82, we've got D'Angelo Malone, who is listed at linebacker. He's an outside linebacker. Uh, he's a pass rusher, not an inside guy, and He's really good. I, I like him. I think this is right around where he should go, and I think it's another B pick. I think it's just a good, solid pick. Uh, 151, we got Tyler Algier, and uh, I'm glad they didn't take a running back too early. I'm glad they didn't try to take one with one of their more valuable picks because if they did that with a roster with this many holes, man, that would have been very bad. So round five is where I'm first starting to think about running back for a roster like this with so many holes, and Tyler Algier was actually a running back four, so I really like this pick actually. Uh, I'm gonna give it, I'm gonna give it another B, uh, just because running back value, even though it's an absolute steal based off of my big board, I I think running back value kind of has to play a part in that. Uh, I just I don't know B plus, we'll say B plus. One ninety, we got Justin Schaefer, guard out of Georgia, and he played mostly left guard at Georgia, I believe, which kind of brings to question. Maybe versatility along the offensive line. I don't know how versatile he's going to be for just a depth piece, round six depth piece. But it's it's the right idea. Get depth on the offensive line, something that they hadn't addressed yet. And then 213. Oh, uh, getting ahead of myself again. Uh, uh, it's, a, it's a B B pick, I think. It's hard to really grade those late round picks, you know, above that or below that. And then John Fitzpatrick, uh, another Georgia guy in staying in state. Uh, tight end this time. They lost Hayden Hurst. They needed depth there. It's another B. You know, they got depth at a position they needed it, and it makes a lot of sense. So overall, I, I quite like the draft class. I think uh, there was some really good players in it, and they landed a quarterback late, you know, round three, which I like. They didn't reach on a running back. Uh, they did a lot of things right, actually. They got some good players and uh, overall, I, I think it's a B plus. I, I don't think it quite cracks the A tier. I want more, you know, elite picks, more A plus picks, I feel like, to get into that A tier of uh, draft. But great draft still, B plus. Next team up is the Baltimore Ravens. And at pick 14, they got kind of a steal with Kyle Hamilton. And uh, Hamilton was hard to predict where he would land, um, depending on how much you value safety. I saw people have him top five and barely make the top 20. So there was a wide range of places. I think 14 is a good landing spot, and the Ravens are a good team for him to go to. History of good safeties and a team that didn't really have a lot of holes, major ones, and... uh, So they could take a lower value position and maybe not quite the biggest need out there in a a best player available, which was Kyle Hamilton. Then at 25, they they did the same thing. Took the best player available, Tyler Linderbaum, who I think is going to be an immediate stud at center. I think uh, he was a top 15 player in the class, but center is another undervalued position, similar to safety. And uh, they pick him up at 25, and I think both of these are uh, A-plus picks. I mean, they are. 
They're both exceptional value. Maybe the Hamilton one's just an A. Uh, it, it's close. It's close either way. Uh, and then 45, another great pick here with David Ajabo. Ajabo is a riskier pick. The last two were kind of more safer picks. Ajabo, a bit riskier, but he fills a giant need, and there's there's actually a ton of connection between Ajabo and Baltimore, and it was one of my favorite landing spots for him at 14 uh, before his injury. And I think, you know, before his injury, he, he was my edge. He was my edge two or edge three behind Hutch and KT. Um, he was ahead of Trayvon Walker. Um, yeah, I mean, and even after the combine, he was still edge four. But then he went and got injured, and it definitely hurt his draft stock. I think here, though, there's some risks with the injury. I'm going to give it a B plus. Travis Jones at 76 is an A-plus pick. It's another A-plus pick. This is exceptional value for a guy who is... Probably the counting Jordan Davis as a nose tackle, the second best nose tackle in the class. Exceptional value here. A tremendous run stuffer. Uh, a plus pick, undoubtedly. 110, Daniel Falele. This is another risky pick, similar to a job over for different reasons. Falele is a giant of a man. I think he's like six foot seven or maybe even taller. Like, he's bigger than um, than uh, any other tackle in the class, I believe. I think the only guy who comes close is Evan Neal, if I'm not mistaken. And he, he is a monster, but injuries are going to be an issue. He's very raw. If you get his upside, it, it's crazy. It's crazy upside. So at 110, I love that. Uh, I'm giving it a B. 119. We get Jalen Armour Davis, and I thought a corner would get picked earlier. I did, but they waited till 119, and they got a good one. This is right around where he should have been. He was my favorite corner from Alabama, the other guy being Josh Job, who uh, I believe went undrafted, if I'm not mistaken, and I really liked Davis. Uh, I loved watching him at Alabama, and I think it's another good pick. I'm going to give it a B. Next up, we got Charlie Kolar, and Kolar is is an interesting player. He's uh, he's massive. He's six foot seven. He's gonna be a phenomenal red zone threat, and I really like that. I think it's it's a valuable guy to have on the roster. Maybe a little bit high. Um, I'm gonna give it a C plus. I I think it is pretty good or a, a B. I'm sorry. I, w- I was looking at uh, looking at a different pick. All right. <laughs> Next up, we've got Jordan Stout, and uh, Stout is is an interesting player because I love Jordan Stout, but I love Matt Areza a whole lot more. <laughs> so I was really shocked not only at where he came off, but that he was the first punter off the board. And he's got place-kicking ability, yes. So maybe they drafted him because of the versatility. But I just think it's ridiculous that they didn't take Matt Areza if he's just going to be a punter. Um, and I'm shocked that it was the fourth round. I mean, we had two punters off the board in the fourth round, and we only had one taken in the entire draft last year. So that that surprised me. Uh, I'm, I'm going to give it a... Uh, I'm going to give it a, a D. I, I think that's just a big reach, in my opinion. All right. Next up, we got Isaiah Likely, who was one of my guys in this draft process. I think he's got amazing pass-catching ability, and I, I think that's good value. Um, I'm going to give it a B plus. Next up, we got Demarion Williams, another corner. They needed more corner depth. I like that they get it here. Uh, at 141, and uh, I, I'm going to give it a B. I, I think that's just a solid pick. And then we got Tyler Batty out of Missouri, which is just a running back, great pass catcher, and another B pick. So overall, I think this draft is actually one of the best out of uh, any team. Uh, just because of those first four or five picks were 
absolutely crazy. They they were really, really good. So overall, I'm going to give it an A. Just short of an A+. Plus. I mean, it's really close. Next up is the Buffalo Bills, who at pick 23 addressed uh, probably their biggest need at corner two with Kyir Elam, who I really like. My only question mark on this pick is the fact that Andrew Booth Jr. was still on the board, who I think was almost unanimously uh, ranked ahead of Kyrie Elam. I think there are some cons- injury concerns with Booth, which if you're worried about him not being ready day one, that makes a ton of sense for a Bills team who wants to win this year. So, you know, that, that's kind of up in the air on that. Uh, overall, I gave it a B plus. Elam's not... I don't think ever going to be an elite corner in the league, but I do think he can be very good, and I think he'll be good uh, year one, as good as a rookie corner can be. At 63, they took James Cook, running back Georgia, and I'm never big on taking running backs, but I do like Cook. He is a fun runner to watch, um, brother of Dalvin Cook, and runs very similarly uh, if you watch the two. Uh, and he's fun to watch, um, and I like the fit here with the Bills. I think he's going to be great to have in that backfield, which was definitely a weak point for them last year. Overall, a uh, B minus. It is a running back, but and it's a little higher than where I had him. But I like the pick overall. Eighty nine. We've got Terrell Bernard, which was a surprising pick to me because this was way ahead of where I was expecting him to be. I, w- I was thinking day three guy. But uh, looking at him, he, he's great in coverage, but still felt like a reach to me. I gave it a C plus. Uh, skipping down to round five now, we took Khalil Shakir. And I actually like this for the Bills. Wide receiver was another big need. And uh, I solved it here with Khalil Shakir, who had a, a bit of a disappointing senior bowl, but still a, a good wide receiver. I, I give it a B plus. I, I like Shakir. In this spot, I don't like him higher than like a round five pick, but round six, Matareza. Uh, I think the best punter in the draft. I don't know why he was the third punter taken. That is crazy to me. I think he could, day year one, be the best punter in the NFL. My guy had seven punts for 70 or more yards in his final year in college. Last year, the entire NFL had seven punts for 70 or more yards. That is crazy. He could instantly be the best punter in football. I'm giving it an A-. minus. It's still a punter. still not valuable. But in round six, I like it better than taking one in round four, which we just saw. All right, then we got Christian Benford, corner Villanova, and, uh, or Burford, sorry. And he, oh no, it is Ben Ford. Uh, he's very big. He, he's got elite size for the position. Uh, maybe projects better at a safety. Um, it's close. Overall, it's a B-plus pick. It's, it's a round six pick. I like it. All right, 209, we got Luke Tenuda, the tackle from Virginia Tech. And this guy is a giant. Reminds me of Daniel Falele. He's six foot eight, 319. Uh, he only played tackle in college so he's not got he's not very versatile uh i'm gonna give it a b it's offensive line depth it's uh a pro- bit of a project guy but it, it's late he's big got some potential 231 we got uh balen specter linebacker clemson and uh he had a he had a decent combine he's a i'd say a pretty average athlete maybe slightly above average which is why he's in round seven and not round four or five. Um, struggles in coverage, yeah, a classic round seven pick, I think. Just comes off as a very average uh, player. If you look at his combine numbers, I think he ran like four six, somewhere in there. Um, wasn't overly impressed when I looked at that. So it uh, seems like a round seven pick, so I just gave it a B. I think that's right on par with where he should be but overall the draft they didn't have a lot of picks certainly not a lot of high ones only three in the top 100 um you know i i don't hate it 
I, I think I'm going to give it a, a B minus. I just don't think there was a lot of picks that blew me away, right? I want those kind of picks. Next up is the Carolina Panthers, who only made six picks, but really made the most of them. Starting at six with Ikea Kwanu, who was my tackle too, but, you know, injury concerns came out with Evan Neal, which uh, could have knocked him down their board. I don't know how serious those were, but I really like Icky. I think he probably had the most upside, debatably. Um, I, I like him. He's a bit of a developmental tackle, but you know what? Panthers, all that matters is they didn't take a quarterback here, and they get an A for that. <laughs> um, at 94, they do take a quarterback now at Matt Corral, and it's an A-plus pick. All these quarterbacks that started falling, these guys are uh, second, third round grades, yes. But we thought teams were going to reach on them. And no, they made the smart move. They waited. They took them in the third round where they mostly belong. I, I do like Corral. I think he's got great arm talent. Comes from a scheme, which is not very, uh, it's just a lot of um, RPOs, very non-NFL scheme. So we'll see how he does in an NFL offense, and I think he could excel. So I'm really excited to watch Corral, whether it be this year or next year or whenever he gets on the field. 120 was uh, Brandon Smith, and uh, this pick gets a B plus, And I really like Smith as an inside linebacker. He is, he is good. This is right around where I had him. On my big board, I think I done a little bit higher. I think it was in my top 100. And, uh, yeah, B-plus pick. Good pick. Then we get a great pick at 189, Amari Barno, a guy who I thought would be taken a lot higher. I'm going to give it an A-plus. Uh, he was either in my top 100 or very close on my big board. So I think this is great value for a versatile defensive lineman. Uh, can move him around, can play him a few different ways. I really like this pick. Then we got Cade Mays, another good pick. Uh, I'm going to give it a B plus. Offensive line depth, but good offensive line depth. He's a good tackle from Tennessee. Uh, this is good spot. Good More offensive line depth. And potentially starter, as weak as this offensive line is. Maybe CMC won't get you know killed this year. All right, 242. Kalen Barnes, a corner from Baylor. Part of a very good... Baylor secondary. I don't know a lot about him. I'm I'm gonna give it a C. I think it's a very average pick. It's he's a run of the mill seventh round corner. You know, corner depth can never have too much of corner depth or pass rush depth or offensive line depth. So, yeah, I, I like the draft overall. I, I think it's an A minus. And I debated this being a B plus, just because there were only six picks. But in those six picks, they made the most of it. I mean, only three inside the top, what, 180? And they, they made the most of it. So I'm going to give it an A-. minus. I think it deserves it. Up next, we've got the Chicago Bears, who started off in the second round, didn't have a first-round pick, with Kyler Gordon, a prospect who I was lower on than most. I had actually a third-round grade for Gordon. Um, I wasn't a huge fan of Gordon. So because of that, I, this is a C minus. I just think it's it's a big reach for me, for where I see him. Uh, I understand. Also, I, I don't like that neither of these top two second picks were offense. I know they brought in a defensive-minded coach, but you've got a young quarterback, and you did nothing in this second round to help him in his development, I just can't get behind that, at least not with this 39th pick. 48 was a better player, in my opinion, in Jaquan Brisker, but still defense. And, like, because of that, I think it knocks this pick down a little bit of a notch to, like, a, a B plus, uh, And it should be higher if that first pick was a receiver or a lineman then this pick would be higher. Uh, at 71, they took Velas Jones Jr. They finally took a receiver, but they reached for one, in my opinion. I'm going to give it a C+, because it is a big position in need. 
They need to get to get Fields a weapon. I just don't know if this was the right one. Then at a 168, they they made a good pick here with Braxton Jones. Uh, I'm gonna give it a B. They uh they tried to overcompensate for not taking a lineman in uh, day two, in day three, and it shows. Then at 174, we got Dominique Robinson, who is very raw. Uh, can play uh, either at outside linebacker or you know hand in the dirt defensive end. So he's versatile as a pass rusher, and I actually like it. I think he's got a, a very good amount of upside, actually. And uh, I'm going to give this pick an A-. I, I actually like this pick. Round 6, we've got Zachary Thomas. And uh, he's actually a more versatile offensive lineman. He, can, he projects as a guard, played tackle in college at San Diego State. Definitely projects best as a guard. And I actually, I like this pick a lot. Um, so I'm, I'm going to give it a, uh, a B plus. Still a uh, good, good offensive lineman late. Still should have took better offensive lineman earlier. Uh, then at 203, they took a running back in Tristan Ebner, who I hadn't heard of. But I look at him, he's, he's a special teams guy. He's an elite special teams guy. Actually, I think he was all Big 12 special teams. He, he's really good as a return guy. I don't know if there's much else there. Then next up, we've got uh, the 207th pick, which was Doug Cremere. And I actually, I like this pick. I'm going to give it an A. I thought he would go earlier than this. He's a really good center prospect. And the third offensive lineman they took. And I think he could be a long-term starter this team i actually really like this pick then 226 not so much like this pick it's a c first of all i'm not huge on jatiri carter looking at him also i can't believe i'm saying this i don't know if taking a late round offensive lineman was actually the best move here and usually i'm all for that get offensive line depth and it's not a bad move necessarily it's just this team has a lot of holes and if you could have swung on a guy who could potentially have filled one of those many needs or another receiver or there was just a lot of other ways that I think they could have used this pick. Uh, so I gave it a C still because it is offensive line depth and that's never necessarily a bad thing, but just not the best move they could have made in my opinion. Then at 254, we got Elijah Hicks, which is just a C pick. Same thing with Trenton Gill. I mean, just even less flashy a punter. And uh, late round safety, yeah, uh, no guarantees for either of these guys to be on the roster in a year. So it, it kind of boring picks, average picks, hence the C. Uh, now overall, I uh, I didn't like what they did early going for defense over wide receiver or offensive line. But on day three, I actually like how they did. They addressed the offensive line. So I think... Overall, I'm, I'm gonna give it a uh, a B minus. Overall, it's still a, a good draft and above average draft for the Bears this year. Next team up is the Cincinnati Bengals, who had an interesting draft. <laughs> um, starting off with Daxton Hill, which is a pick I I actually really like. He's an extremely versatile defensive back who can play safety. Uh, inside corner, you know, there's they'd have to move around some pieces in that secondary, but they could definitely fit him in, right? Uh, great value. It's an A-minus pick. I really like the pick. I was really high on Daxton Hill, had him as a top 20 player in the class. I love the pick. Then we get down to 60, and they take Cam Taylor Britt. And uh, let me just uh, talk about him for a second. He's an extremely versatile defensive back who... Uh, it's probably best at inside corner, could potentially play safety, maybe outside corner. Does that sound similar to anybody? Oh, that's right. Maybe the guy you just drafted. And not only that, but you already have players fulfilling the roles of safety, right? right? Free safety, inside corner. But the one role you're lacking is a true outside corner. So if, if Britt is able to play at outside corner... 
I think this pick looks better. Right now, I'm going to give it a B- minus because I'm not sure um, exactly uh, where he actually fits in that defense with Daxton Hill there as well. But uh, a B-, minus if, if he can play outside corner, I think that could easily go up. All right, 95, uh, Zach Carter, who uh, I gave a C+. Plus. Um, I think this was a reach only because of his versatility, which the Bengals value extremely highly. Might be why they've taken 3,000 versatile defensive backs. But they take a versatile lineman, a um, bit of a tweener. I think they have him listed at DT, not edge. So we'll see. I think he'll play both positions. I don't hate the pick. It's a C plus. It's it's an average pick. Round four, one thirty six. Cordell Volson, offensive line. Um, yeah, I, I knew they'd take at least one lineman because sure they they filled up a lot of spots in free agency, but it, it never hurts. They needed another one, and they got a really good guard. I think is Ray projects best, but he has played tackle as well. He's uh, extremely versatile. If he is just a backup he, he is quite versatile there so I, I actually really like this pick i'm gonna give it a b plus 166 we've got tyson anderson safety from toledo and uh l- let me talk about tyson anderson for a second because he's a, a extremely versatile defensive back who can play slot who can play safety uh, probably not outside corner wait a second didn't I already talk about two players like this? Yes, I did. They took another one. They took another one. There is no way this guy's getting any playing time year one or maybe even next year. I mean, it depends on what happens with Bates. But this is just a horrible pick, in my opinion, and it's not because of Anderson. Uh, nothing against Anderson. He's probably a, a really great dude, right? Probably a good. He's a good player. Uh, really a little high for him, in my opinion, but it's a D plus only because there's just no chance this guy gets playing time anytime soon, and he's just not a need. They could have took a tight end, a wide receiver. I wouldn't have hated a linebacker, an inside linebacker here. No, they take another defensive back. Crazy to me. And they traded up for this pick as well, which is even crazier. Then at 252, they made actually a killer pick. A plus, Jeffrey Gunter. They have him at linebacker. He, he's an edge rusher. And uh, it, it's amazing value. I, I had a fourth round grade for him. I loved him. He, he was great. Um, I really like the value here. He's a great edge rusher. Phenomenal pick. Biggest problems with this draft class is obviously way too many defensive backs. No tight end, no wide receiver, uh, no inside linebacker, right? They left some holes in a team that's trying to win now. So for win now teams, you kind of, you like to fill the holes. You don't necessarily just go best player available or best defensive back available in this case. So a few problems with it, but overall, I'm still going to give it a B. I I debated this being a B minus or even a C plus. But I do think they got good players, even if half of them are defensive backs. So, B overall, not too bad. The Cleveland Browns uh, did not have a first-round pick, and uh, ended up not picking till 68. uh, Whenever they took Martin Emerson out of Mississippi State, and I actually, I really like Emerson. Uh, This was uh, lower than I had him on my big board, but not by much. Uh, I'll give it an A-. I really like Emerson. Uh, 78, Alex Wright, a guy I, I wasn't so high on, but I, I do see the the upside with him. Lots of athletic upside. And uh, a high, though, a high pick. They didn't need to reach. They probably could have traded back and got him. I'll give it a B- minus, just because it's a good player, but too high. Now, David Bell at 99 is right around where I had him, and he, his tape looks better than his athletic testing that's for sure he he did not test out well part of the reason he fell 299 and i'll give it a b just right around where he should have went and a a big need so i like that then at 108 we've got an absolute steal in my opinion with perry on winfrey 
the first Sooner they took, uh, an absolute steal. Uh, I had him well above this, uh, close to my top 50. So, yeah, I really like this this pick, uh, pair on Winfrey. I'll give it an A. Then at 124, pick I'm less fond of, and Katie York, <laughs> a kicker in the fourth round. Uh, they, If you remember right, they just took a fifth-round kicker a few years ago, I believe. Um, not not a big fan of this. Um, my opinion, not even the best kicker in the draft, or particularly close, probably third. And a fourth-round pick feels too high, especially when most of the kickers and punters in the league are undrafted free agents. Feels a bit rich for me, so uh, I'll give it a C minus because if it works out, you know, similar to like an Evan McPherson last year, who ended the season perfect for like the last I don't know twelve weeks or something on the run all the way to the Super Bowl, then yeah, that that grade will go up. But if not, that grade's definitely gonna come down. So that's why I kind of left it open ended with a C minus. One fifty six was Jerome Ford, who was a running back. I was I was quite high on. Uh, he was in my top 100 players and i really liked ford and i think this is good value um even for a running back <laughs> so a b plus um close to an a minus but i'm gonna give it a b plus then we got mike woods wide receiver oklahoma and uh the the second of the three sooners they took and woods is interesting he is a very average receiver no, nothing pops off athletically or really route running wise just very average to me I, I don't understand this draft pick I think there were other better players who went completely undrafted who you could have took here but I, I give it a C just because I'm not a big fan of it but you know I, I, I can't hang on getting more wide receiver depth I guess then we get Isaiah Thomas the final sooner and I like this pick a little more than the last one I'll give it a B uh, because he he's quite strong, um, he he's a little slow off the line of scrimmage, which is a bit concerning. But I do like his upside, uh, and I think he could actually be a contributor as a seventh round pick. Then finally, Dawson Deaton, an offensive lineman, not just an offensive lineman. I think he I think he projects best as a center. Uh, he has played all around the offensive line in college in the NFL. I, I think center will be best for him. He's extremely athletic extremely tested out amazingly at the combine and i think it's kind of a steal here at the back end of the seventh round i give it an a minus and i think that's about right overall for the draft it was uh it was a pretty good draft actually i think they did pretty good uh filled a bunch of pretty big needs they, they still left a couple open uh inside linebacker is the one that pops out to me immediately I, I still think it's a solid draft, but, you know, it's definitely not an A. It's not in that A range. doesn't have those kind of pop-off-the, you know, pop-off-the-charts picks. Uh, I think I'm just going to give it a B, just a flat B. The Cowboys started off their draft with offensive tackle or offensive guard, probably guard right away, Tyler Smith. Smith is kind of a controversial pick. Just he's a penalty machine on a team that is full of penalty machines. That's a problem, right? That could, uh, you know, you see, this could be a big problem. He, he's very raw, but he does have a lot of upside. Um, I'm still giving it a C plus. I, uh, I actually liked other offensive linemen on the board more. And uh, I, I think he's, he kind of just, he has a problem that the team already has a problem with with penalties doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me um 56 we've got sam williams who i was actually a huge fan of i really liked sam williams this is right around where i had him and i give it a b plus i think it's really good value for a good pass rusher who, who's quite versatile is a little raw needs to work on some stuff seems to be the theme with this class though 88 jalen tolbert uh, actually, one of my favorite receivers in the class, uh, at least for day two receivers. 
I think this was quite late for him. I think he fell. Uh, some of the receivers that went before him, I'm just like scratching my head at how they went before Jalen Tolbert. So overall, I think this was a steal for the Cowboys. And another B-plus pick. I, I really liked this pick. Uh, 129, we got Jake Ferguson, another receiver for Dak Prescott. He's got to be happy with this class so far. Uh, gets Jake Ferguson, uh, another a good tight end. Uh, gave it a B. I think this is right around where he should have went. Uh, I like Ferguson. Then we got 155, Matt Waletsko, who uh, I had to do some research on, but uh, he uh, he actually reminds me of Tyler Smith quite a bit. He's extremely raw. He uh, has a lot of stuff to work on, but has a lot of athletic upside. So I, I would have preferred, if you're going to get another offensive lineman, to get maybe a safer guy here since you already took a big risk with Tyler Smith. So I, I gave it a C-. I just don't think it was the right play here. Then we got Deron Bland out of Fresno State. Another raw guy, but this one I like a lot more. So you, you've already got a pretty good secondary, um, and you add a guy who's great depth and has great upside. I really like that pick. I actually really like that pick, so I'm going to give it a B. And there's some legal issues, I believe, with one of their corners as well. So this is kind of an insurance plan there as well. Then 176 for Damone Clark, I think is a steal. I, I had him in my top 100 players, actually. So a massive steal based on my board. I, I got to give it an A. I mean, 70 spots. You're thinking A plus here. I'm going to give it an A. Inside linebacker. Um, per, Maybe just a depth piece, but really they do need another guy. Um, when Parsons, you know Parsons pass rushing a lot, so yeah, I really like this pick. Uh, next up, we got John Ridgeway, DT out of Arkansas. Uh, another guy I didn't know a lot about, but uh, it, it, looking into him, he's a great run stopper, but has virtually no pass rush. Very raw. Another one, I know. But he's great against the run. He could be an, a, a great run stopper immediately, I think. So, very good pick there, a B. And then uh, 193. See, for a sixth-round pick, I think Devin Harper's ultimately just a special teamer. And I think in the sixth, you know, in the seventh, I'm all right with that. But in the sixth, that, that doesn't feel great value. Uh, I gave it a C. Maybe he could amount to something. Uh, depth at linebacker at best. I think uh, probably just a special teamer, practice squad guy. Not a big fan of that pick, just to see. Uh, overall, the class is interesting. I feel like there's no player who I can confidently say is a safe bet to be a starter on this team. The guy I feel most confident saying that is either Sam Williams or Jalen Tolbert. One of those two, probably Williams, and even he is raw. But I think he could be a rotation pass rusher. But like... The point is, this this class is extremely raw, extremely risky, um, and I think that's got to knock him down. I, I think it's about a C plus, debatably a B in the B range, but I'm gonna give it a C plus. Just a very risky class there. Next up is the Denver Broncos, who didn't pick until the last pick of the second round. So, Broncos fans had a, a wild wait, but they made that pick count with uh, edge rusher Nick Benito who was uh, pretty good value, actually, um, at 64. It's right around where I had him on my big board, and I think most people had him around this spot. He's uh, got good upside. I think he could be a instant day one uh, rotational pass rusher and uh, eventually an every-down guy. So, so for a Broncos roster, which is pretty set, it's a good pick, uh, B+. Plus. Next up, Greg Dolchich, the tight end, who... Uh, Feels like a pick to make Russell Wilson happy. He's a phenomenal deep threat. He's going to stretch the field. A uh, very good tight end. Uh, was, uh, probably my tight end, too. It was close between him and uh, Jelani Woods. Then uh, that's another B+. 115 was Damari Matisse, corner from Pitt. And this one was, this one was uh, interesting to me. It felt like a, a big reach. Uh, looks like a special teamer, uh, year one. He's definitely a big project, which, you know, isn't isn't a bad thing for a team with not a lot of holes. It's just, I'm not a big fan of that, you know, at 115. A little later, it's all right. Uh, 
that's a C plus. But the next one, I'm, I like this pick a lot more. E, Ioma Wuzrike. Oh, man, I butchered the crap out of that. But a great player, all right? He, he's very versatile he, across the interior defensive line. Uh, and he has a lot of pass rushing, not just upside. He's got pass rush skills day one. I think he could be a uh, starter, at least on certain downs, yeah, year one. And uh, eventually a really good asset to this team. I love this pick. That's an easy A. 152, Delarin turner Yell uh, from Oklahoma, the safety. This one, this one's interesting. He's uh, a good, strong safety. It was fun at Oklahoma. Just feels like another reach, like a good player, just not quite where he should have landed. Um, he he's very good against the run, but he struggles a lot in coverage. One sixty two is Montrell Washington, the wide receiver from Samford, which um, he, he's a return specialist, and he has some potential to be a gadget guy. I'm not sure if he'll get there, but. Usually I'm not big on these special team picks in, you know, round five uh, or earlier, but here for a Broncos team, which has struggled with returners uh, historically, I think it's a good pick. It's a B minus. Uh, 171 might be one of my favorite picks from this whole draft um, class. That is Luke Wattenberg. Oh, they have him listed offensive line. He, he played center. Uh, he has played left guard in the past, but I think he's a center. Um at the NFL level, and it shows that they're not happy, and they shouldn't be. They need some competition at that position, and he could potentially win the starting job. I think he's that good. I think this is tremendous value and a big need, so A-minus pick there. Then at 206, we have uh, Matt Henningsen, probably Matt Henningsen, uh, the DT from Wisconsin, and he, he's quite raw, but... He, he has that athletic upside that you, you're willing to take a chance on in the sixth round. Then at 232, we've got Fayon Hicks, the corner. And uh, this guy, uh, it, it's a need. They didn't get a corner earlier. I thought they would. He's just a depth piece. Might not make the roster, but a, a good pick. You know, it, it's a C. It's just an average pick there. Now, overall, uh, I'm thinking... About a B minus is where I have it, and they they did what they should have done for a team in this position. They addressed their needs. They got good upside players, and uh, with limited capital, they they did a good job. I give it a B minus. Um, I just don't know if they ever would have gotten above this, like for what they need to do with a, a so the roster like this. So this is a very good draft for the Broncos, even though it's only a B minus. The Detroit Lions picked at uh, number two overall and got, in my opinion, the best player in the class, Aiden Hutchinson. And that is an absolute massive win. That's an A-plus pick. I don't think you can look at it any other way. He's a, a Michigan native, uh, grew up near Detroit, uh, great locker room presence, uh, going to change the culture there. Uh, this is an amazing pick. I, I absolutely love this pick. Then they traded up with the Vikings in division and uh, came up and got wide receiver Jamison Williams, who uh, there's some risk there uh, coming off an ACL injury, but when healthy, this guy looks like definitely the fastest player in the class and maybe the best wide receiver in the class. Um, his speed just pops off on tape, and we didn't get to see him run, but I think he, he could have easily posted a faster time than Taekwon Thornton. Um, but uh, an A-minus pick, uh, there's a little risk, but I absolutely love it, especially with a roster like this, which isn't looking to win now. So they're willing to wait uh, however long it takes for him to get on the field and be 100%. Uh, at 46, we've got Josh Pascal, or Pascal, which felt like a little bit of a reach to me, but I like the player, so I still gave it a B just because he is a good player, a little high for me. Um, from where I would have liked him, but overall, um, still a very good pick. 97, we got Kirby Joseph, who was actually on my uh, underrated players list, players to watch out for, and I really like him. Uh, B-plus pick, this is right around where he should have went, and I think he could be 
uh, a key contributor for this team down the line. Then uh, 177, we got James Mitchell, who uh, was was an interesting guy. Uh, I'm not too sure about this pick. I gave it a C. He, he's definitely a project, has a torn ACL right now, and uh, when he was healthy, he was used kind of all over the field. They couldn't really find a, a surefire role for him. Uh, so it'll be interesting. Uh, high upside player, but I don't know about here at 177. Uh, then at 188, we've got Malcolm Rodriguez, a uh, pick I like a little bit more. A B plus. He's he's undersized, which is why he came all the way at, available at 188. He would have gone a lot higher if he was a little taller, a little longer, but he tested like a freak. Uh, he broke the linebacker bench record for the reps. I mean, this guy is an absolute freak athlete. Um, but he is undersized for the NFL, what they value at the position. So um, that's why he was here at 188. I love the pick, though, B+. Plus. And at 217, James Houston, linebacker from Jackson State. Uh, he, he's an edge, not, not another inside linebacker, an edge here. Um, and his nickname is literally the problem. He, he, as in, like, Houston, we have a problem. He, he's the problem. That's what the announcers nicknamed him, and uh, that should tell you all you need to know. He put up insane, insane stats at Jackson State, so I, I like it, taking a chance on a guy like this. It's a B-minus pick. I like it. Chase Lucas, the corner, he's uh, he's very athletic, but he's just going to have to fight for a roster spot. I don't know where he fits in the corner room or if he makes the roster, but he does have the athleticism to be uh, an NFL corner, a C pick. Uh, overall... I actually, I like the draft class overall. It's pretty solid. I think they there was a few uh, few reaches, a few places I would have done it a little differently, but just those two first those two first round picks alone I have to put this class like at least a B or above. And I think I'm gonna give it a B plus. Um, it, it's a really good class. Uh, it's close between B and B plus. I lean B plus. Finally, we have made it to my Packers. I am a Packers fan, so, you know, if there's any grades that should be spot on, it should be these ones. Uh, starting off at 22 with Quay Walker. Now, through this draft process, I wasn't as high on Quay Walker as some people. Uh, he, he was never cracked my top three linebackers. He was four. Um, I liked his teammate, Nicobe Dean, even better. But I see the athletic upside. I see why the Packers like him. He he just you see him, and he is definitely a Packers style of player. And linebacker it is a need. It, it definitely is. So not not the worst pick. Um, B B grade, twenty eight. Uh, this one gets an A, and it was very close to an A plus. Devontae Wyatt uh, could easily be the best interior defensive lineman in the class. Certainly the best pass rusher. He's going to look great on this defensive line. Uh, this is going to be a dynamic duo on that interior defensive line. It just is. It's going to be it's gonna be scary <laughs> for other teams to have to deal with that. So I'm extremely excited to that. I don't know how many times I mocked Devontae Wyatt to the Packers, and it happened. So then the trade up to 34 for Christian Watson. After day one, not getting a receiver. I uh, I knew this draft class wasn't going to crack a C if they didn't get an early receiver, if they didn't get a good receiver in round two. And they did. They got Christian Watson, a guy who I, he was one of my guys. Uh, since I saw him at the Senior Bowl, I had a round two grade on him when most people were saying three or four. Then he comes out at the Combine, and a lot of people are on that round two train and tested like a freak, absolutely freakish athlete, big dude, uh, has some drop issues, uh, not the best hands, but 
you know, there's some questions with his route running ability. Uh, I, I think he's worth the pick, and he, he's definitely a Packers style of receiver. I think he was their guy from the start, and that's why they didn't take a first round receiver. Uh, B plus grade on that one. A little riskier, but I still like the. Tri- I still like it. Ninety two. Uh, Sean Ryan, I'm giving this an A+. Plus. I think this is tremendous value for a versatile offensive lineman who's a depth piece right off the bat, could could step in at guard. There's been a Packers. We've struggled with injuries across the offensive line. That's been a big story for the Packers. So having a guy like Ryan who can pop in and excel out at guard or really wherever you need him, I think is extremely good. Then at 132, we got Romeo Dubs, wide receiver Nevada. And... Uh, Another wide receiver who was at the Senior Bowl, but this one I didn't like as much. Uh, it just didn't impress me very much. I gave it a B. I think this is right around where he should have went. Uh, not my favorite receiver, not the most dynamic, but uh, in a room, in a wide receiver room that just needs any help it can get, it's help. <laughs> 140, Zach Tom. Now, this is another A-plus lineman pick. This is tremendous value. I love Zach Tom. Love Zach Tom. Uh, I had a round three grade on him, actually. He was in my top uh, I don't think he was quite in my top 100 players, but he was close. Love Zach Tom. Uh, I think he's going to be a great uh, depth piece right off the bat, but he's, he's a bit more of a project, but he could be a starting tackle down the lo- road. Then at 179, Kingsley and Agbury. Uh, this is another A-plus pick. I uh, I had Nagbury a lot higher than this. I had him in round three, actually, and he, he's another upside guy. But if he works out, he could be a great edge rusher. He kind of only has like one or two pass rush moves, but he's an extremely great athlete, and he does those one or two moves extremely well. Then we skip down to round seven. We got Tariq Carpenter, linebacker, Georgia Tech. And uh, I'm not too big on this pick at 228, and I actually think he's more of a safety from what I've seen. Uh, So... It's depth at the position, um, safety or linebacker, I guess, wherever you want to play him. A C-plus pick, you know, a slightly above average pick. 234, uh, that 232 pick was actually the Bronco, uh, Broncos pick. So I don't know, weird, weird having it on here. But 234, we got Jonathan Ford, the, uh, defensive tackle. And this guy is big. This guy's just going to be depth piece, obviously, with Devontae Wyatt. But he is massive. Um, and he's probably going to be special teams blocker. He has blocking experience on, on special teams. So he might get some playing time there. So a you know, rare seventh-round pick actually gets playing time. But he could. He could if he impresses the special teams coach enough. 249, we got Rashid Walker. Uh, just more offensive line depth. Uh, a minus pick here. I think it was good value. I actually had him above this, so I like that pick. Uh, last week, Samori Torre, just more wide receiver depth, uh, B plus pick. Uh, once again, the wide receiver room just needs more help, more depth. Then uh, overall, uh, I'm actually this is a tough grade. It's it's close between an A and an A plus, I think. And uh, I I think I'm leaning A. But it's extremely close, I'll be honest. If there was a class that d- deserves an A+, plus, this is about as close as it gets. But I'm going to bring it back down to an A, just because I think since I'm a Packers fan, I want to give it the A+, plus, so I'm going to give it the A. The Texans are up next, and this one felt like a hard one to grade, just because they got a lot of good players, but not good value for those players. So there's a lot of reaches, starting off at number three, which was ultimately a reach on Derek Stingley. He uh, has tremendous upside, uh, easily a top three upside in the class. But there are some concerns on how he played the last couple seasons compared to uh, his freshman year, and uh, there's a lot of concerns with Stingley. I'm going to give it a B, B grade. I I still like the pick, just do think it's it's a little reach, uh, pretty risky as well for a Texans team, which I thought was just going for a good floor, you know, get good players in there, not trying to take a lot of risks, but they proved me wrong. 15, Kenyon Green. Well, this one is the big reach. Uh, I'm going to give it a D, and that that's a little harsh, but I think the value of this pick is just not there. Kenyon Green, uh, a guard-only prospect, in my opinion, and not even the best guard prospect in the draft, uh, which I think is Zion Johnson. And then you you did trade back, 
but to 15, where he, he still would have been on the board, I think, in the 20s. So it, it's kind of a, a head-scratcher for me. I'm giving a D. I mean, you do – it's the right idea. Get offensive line help, uh, you know, protect your quarterback, get a fair evaluation on him. But, ah, uh, just not here, not at 15. 37, a pick I like a lot more, Jalen Petrie. This is a very versatile defensive back, safety, slot corner, wherever you want to put him at. I really like this pick. Uh, there were some other safeties on the board here, I believe. If I'm just trying to think back. I think there were some other guys who I liked better, if you want just a true safety. Um, not Lewis Seen. I think Brisker was still on the board at this point, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, a couple others are uh, maybe just him. Still a B-plus pick. Good pick. Uh, 44, less good pick. <laughs> I gave it a D-plus. John Mechie, wide receiver Alabama. I really like Mechie in the 90s as a third-round pick. I really don't like Mechie in the second round as 44th. I think there are better receivers on the board. I think if you wanted him, you probably could have gotten him at 75 or at least traded either took someone else here and then traded up from 75 and got him in the 60s right into the second round i i'm just not big on this on this selection here d plus i, I like john matchy just not at 44 seems to be a theme with this draft right uh 75 christian harris actually a good value pick this is right around where he should have went b plus pick good linebacker i like him i think he's got plenty of upside um yeah, I, I like Christian Harris. He was never uh, a top 50 player for me, but uh, is a good good linebacker. There's really good linebacker class, actually, this year, depth-wise, at least. All right, round four, 107, Damian Pierce. This is a fun pick. This, Damian Pierce was my third best running back, and he fell to 107. And, yes, that's a fall. I think this is amazing value. It's an A pick running back. I'm glad they didn't take one earlier on a team with so so many holes uh this is a great pick 150 they took thomas booker defensive end from stanford not samford stanford and uh he can play across the d-line he's very versatile now he played off a uh, defensive end in college but uh the texans actually have him listed as a defensive tackle so i'm not quite sure what'll happen there uh that'll be interesting something to watch i guess but yeah, uh, since he is so versatile, I do think he'll get playing time year one, even as a fifth-round pick, especially on a roster that's, uh, well, not exactly great. And then at 205, um, or, or 170, sorry, <laughs> getting ahead of myself, um, we've got Tegan Kuya, yeah. um, not, not going to try to pronounce that, just a tight end from Oregon State. Don't know a lot about him, actually. Uh, and then at 205, we've got Austin DeCoulas, uh offensive tackle. And this just feels like offensive line depth, um, late B, B grade. Um, a solid guy. Lo looked at him. Um, and seems pretty solid, pretty standard late round offensive line depth. Overall, not the biggest fan of this draft, I'll be honest. Uh, there were there felt like a lot of reaches, a lot of things they could have done better if they maneuvered the draft board a little bit better. I think this grade is a lot higher, but I'm gonna have to give it a C plus. Just too many reaches uh, for me to to give it any higher. The Indianapolis Colts are up next, and they did not pick until 53. And uh, there they actually made a really good pick, in my opinion, an A minus grade on Alec Pierce, a guy who I was higher on than most, but I guess not higher on than the Colts. I had him just barely outside of my top 50, I think around the 60s, and I'm big on Pierce. He's not the fastest guy, uh, but he still gets separation. He's very physical off the line of scrimmage, and I really like that. I really like watching him. He's a fun fun wide receiver uh, when you're watching, and not because of the you know, crazy speed, but for other reasons, right? 73, Jelani Woods. A uh, tight end who I really like. This is good value right around where he should have went. A B-plus pick. Just a pretty good, good pick. Uh, Going to be a fun weapon for Matt Ryan. I, I like that. Who, uh, you know, had Kyle Pitts. Now he's got Jelani Woods. All right. 77, Bernard Ryman. Uh, A-plus pick. I really thought he had a shot at going in the first round. Instead, he slips to the third. A guy who 
uh, has only been playing offensive tackle for a couple years was a tight end um He's got tons of upside, tons of athletic upside, and uh, even furthermore, I think he actually has a shockingly high floor. For having only played this um, position for two years, he could be an instant starter, in my opinion, in the NFL. So, really like this pick. All right, 96, we got Nick Cross, safety, Maryland, and I'm going to give this pick a B. I think it's a pretty good pick. Uh guy who who's got some potential to be a good starter in the NFL I don't don't think he starts year one but good depth immediately and potential starter uh round five we've got uh 159 with uh Eric Johnson DT Missouri State and uh he's got decent upside nothing crazy uh he's a little raw still and he looked all right at the senior bowl nothing gonna blow you away just a a C pick and a, a C player. I feel like just pretty average guy is what it feels like to me. All right, 192, Andrew Ogletree, tight end, Youngstown, Youngston State. Uh, this one, this one's, he's not just a tight end, so they're not just drafting another tight end. He, he played wide receiver in uh, college as well. He was kind of used all over the place a little bit in between there, but I do like uh, the reasoning for taking him, I, I think he could be good. He's a great athlete, a B pick. Uh, I, I like uh, Ogletree. At 216, we've got Curtis Brooks, uh, defensive tackle. Um, and he, he's a little undersized, which is probably why he fell to the sixth round. That seems to be a theme with a lot of these late round guys. They're undersized, but you know have flashes or whatever or have other desirable qualities. I'm going to give it a B plus. He, he's very athletic and had really good production, actually, at Cincinnati. Uh, had a good pro day as well, which definitely boosted his stock a lot. All right, pick 239. Uh, a B pick, this one. Rodney Thomas is a, a versatile corner or safety. Uh, only played safety, actually, one year. He used to be a linebacker in college, only switched to safety uh, just last year, and has some potential corner upside as well. Could maybe play corner in the NFL. It'll be interesting. He'll be fighting to to land a roster spot this year. It'll be fun. B pick. B pick. Uh, overall, a B plus draft class, I think. They landed, they landed some good players, especially uh, day two. And day three, they didn't whiff. They didn't take, you know, really bad prospects. I like it. Uh, guys with upside, guys who could come in a couple years and be good starters in the league. So I like the draft. B plus. Next up, the team with the first overall pick, the Jacksonville Jaguars. And uh, they took Trayvon Walker, number one overall, a pick that I didn't like that much. It's a B. It's still a B pick. Um, he's still great upside, a phenomenal athlete, but I preferred Aiden Hutchinson. I actually preferred Kayvon Thibodeau as well to Walker. So um, I, I see why they picked him. I understand it, but I, I still would have preferred Hutchinson or even Thibodeau at the at the spot. Uh, next up, 27, Devin Lloyd. Uh, this was actually really great value. A, an easy A pick for me. Uh, I th- figured uh, he'd be the first linebacker off the board, um, as most people did. And uh, it was Quay Walker, so that was kind of a surprise. But I, I really like Lloyd, and this is a good spot for him to land. 65, Luke Fortner, center from Kentucky. And this is a C-plus grade just because it's a little bit of a reach. This is a little high for him. Uh, he's, a, he's a center-only guy for me. Maybe has some guard versatility. I don't know. Uh, it's kind of iffy. Uh, feels a little high for me, but a, a good player still. And then at 70, Chad Muma, a pick I, I really like. Uh, another inside linebacker. and uh, But the, he's... He's a great run stopper. He's a fun player. Uh, hits hard. I like I like Muma. Very good value here at 70. I had him in my top 50. Actually, is my uh, linebacker 5, I think. I'm trying to think back to my big board. But, yeah, I really like him. Uh, for a while, he was my linebacker 3. So, ended up falling after athletic testing and all that. But, yeah, good pick there. B+. Plus. 154, we got uh, Snoop Connor. Great name, uh, running back from Mississippi, actually. And this is an uh, interesting pick. You know, you just invested a first-round pick in a running back last year. 
and then he goes and gets injured oh, for the entire season. So you definitely need an insurance policy after you know, two running backs out for the season last year, season-ending injuries. That's a problem. That's a big problem. So they draft Snoop Connor as kind of their insurance policy, a depth piece more than likely. But he could be much more than that because he's a really good receiving back. So I could see him getting some uh, some reps year one as, you know, their receiving back, which he excels at. And, uh, you know, with the injury struggles, I like the pick. I'm not sure about the value. Feels like a bit of a reach. Uh, I'll give it a C minus. Uh, 197. Gregory Jr. This pick is interesting. He's a D2 player. Went to the Senior Bowl and didn't really impress against higher level competition. You know he he didn't look out of place, but he didn't exactly impress. None of the none of the defensive backs there really did, though. To be fair, uh, so C plus pick, good value, right where he should be, really. Uh, next pick, they have back-to-back picks. Grant Calcaterra, pick I like a lot more. A-, minus, I think it's great value. I-, I like Calcaterra. I think he should have went higher than this. He was a top 150 player for me, but I was higher on him than most, to be fair. I think the PFF board had him right around here, so uh, good good pick. 222, we've got Monteric Brown, who uh, he- he's a great value pick, actually. He-, he was expected to go higher than this. And uh, excellent, excellent uh, player against SEC competition. He was first team all SEC, slipped to the seventh round. I mean, he he was going up against SEC level competition, and he still excelled. Uh, So at uh, Arkansas, uh, Razorback. And uh, yeah, I like Brown here at an A-pick to round off the dra- draft class for the Jags. And uh, I, overall, I like, the, I like the Jags draft class. A good start for this new uh, new leadership in the Jaguars franchise. Hopefully they can do a little better this year than uh, last year with old Urban Meyer. Uh, B, a B draft class overall. I like it. Pretty solid. Our last team for this video is the Kansas City Chiefs. And they picked at 21 after trading up with the Patriots and selected Trent McDuffie. A pick I, I really like. Uh, A-plus pick, actually. I think it's great value, a uh, big position in need, and a guy who uh, I really, I was I was a big Trent McDuffie fan. And with McDuffie, you kind of either love him or hate him, is how it seems to be. He's a little undersized, but I, I think he makes up for it. He, he plays great uh, on the film. Pick 30, George Koloftis. Another guy who I think is great value, an A-pick for sure. For a while, I thought they were going to get uh, Jermaine Johnson. If they got him, I mean, this class is just an, an easy A+. plus If they land Jermaine Johnson, in my opinion. Uh, 54, uh, we got Sky Moore. Another tremendous value pick. Guy, most people were mocking to them at 30. Right, Reports came out they were high on Sky Moore, and they ended up landing him in the second instead of the first. Great, great pick. Uh, another A pick. Uh, this is about where I had Sky Moore personally, but a lot of people had him higher, so I like it. I think I had him in the 40s, mid 40s. All right, next up we got 62 Brian Cook, safety Cincinnati. Felt like a bit of a reach to me. I had him a lot lower, but I I do like him on uh, on tape. He he was fun. The whole Cincinnati secondary was fun. They had Sauce Gardner, uh, Kobe Bryant. Uh, Brian Cook, they had some good players. Uh, That Cincinnati team was pretty loaded this year, defense and offense. Then at 104, Leo Chennault. I'll tell you what I have written down for Chennault uh, as my grade. An A++. That's the only player that I've done that for. And the reasoning is he was my linebacker too. This guy is an athletic freak with crazy upside. And they got him at 104. Now, a lot of people were lower on him than me. And apparently the NFL was uh, was with those people. But I think I think he's going to prove a lot of people wrong. Uh, I, I really thought the Patriots would take him in the first round, actually, is where I mocked him a lot. But instead, the Chiefs take him in the third round. And I love the pick. A++. Easily. 135, we got Joshua Williams. Now, Williams is a bit of an interesting player, a B-plus uh, for me. Uh, he played against uh, low-level competition, but he is very long, athletic, and uh, it'll be interesting to see if he pans out, uh, maybe a little high 
in my opinion. Probably could have traded down, got him, or whatever. But, you know, that's nitpicky. B-plus pick. Still g good player. And a decent value. 145, this is an A pick. This is tremendous value. They have him listed at tackle. I, I like him better at guard, actually, at the NFL level. But uh, a great value pick. I had him in my top 100 players. Uh, he didn't really test out great, uh, if I remember right, which dropped him off a lot of people's boards. But Chiefs pick him up at 145. I think it's great depth for the offensive line and a potential starting guard for them. All right, 243. We've got uh, Jalen Watson, corner from Washington State. And this this is actually good value. A B pick, I think. Uh, he's, a, he's a good press corner, uh, very physical at the line of scrimmage. And uh, I think he could make the roster, actually, in a, in a corner room that does need some help. 251, Isaiah Pacheco. Uh, running back from Rutgers, and this is a guy who, whose name uh, I didn't hear a lot in the draft process until late, actually. I didn't hear it until late, and uh, I actually did scout him, and he's a fun player. Uh, I did expect him to go undrafted, actually. I thought he was just going to be an underrated UDFA. No, they end up drafting him, and uh, he ran a 4 3 7 40. But here's the problem. You know, he's got great long speed, but uh, not the greatest lateral mover and is not a great pass catcher. Is a really bad press pass catcher and doesn't have the greatest vision whenever he's carrying the ball. You know, there's definitely concerns with him, but a very fast guy. Uh, I think he could work out. Uh, it'll be interesting. Then last pick, safety, Nazee Johnson, safety from Marshall. And this pick is uh, a C-plus pick. Uh, a C pick, sorry. The <laughs> last pick was a C plus. He, he's a versatile defensive back. I'm not really sure where he fits in the secondary. I don't know if he ends up making the final roster, honestly. I just don't I don't know where he fits in. Uh it'll be interesting. He'll he'll fight. He'll fight to make it though. But overall, uh I'm gonna give the class an A. This is another one similar to the Packers, very close to an A plus. So both really good classes. No A plus in, in this video. Uh, there was a few that were close, Ravens, Packers, uh, Chiefs, just to name a few, but just an A, just an A. And If you're still watching at this point, I'd just like to thank you for watching all the way through and ask you to consider subscribing and hitting the like button. This video took me a really long time to make and uh, be sure to come back, uh, subscribe, turn on notifications so that you, you get notified once part two comes out because I've already started working on it and it's going to be really good. A lot of good draft classes in that one, but uh, I think that's all I got for you guys today. So uh, check out part two whenever it comes out. No idea when that'll be. But uh, peace out.